like the brothers are nothing in white booty. That's what they're mad at. Brothers, when you are nothing in white booty, I need you to do one thing. I need you before you bust a nut, I need you to be like, oh, that's why SBL. That's what I need you to do. I need you to go before you, before you not really hard. I need you to go, you know, oh, brothers be free. The optics of SYSBM are indeed odd. It's a group founded by a man who wears a medieval helmet for privacy. His followers refer to him as the Lord High Commander and to themselves as disciples. Salute to the Lord High Commander of SYSBM, Mad Bus Driver X, the founder and leader of the SYSBM movement. One disciple wears a Dark Vader helmet, another routinely laughs at his own jokes. But so you won't. <laughs> so you. So you. This guy fetishizes minors, and another is the owner of a horrible blog. But as silly as it looks, SYSBM is nuttier than you think. It claims every black man, past or present, who dates out as SYSBM, endorses eugenics, rewrites history, advocates relocating to cities within the United States with a small black population to increase one exoticness, believes black men are the most sought after group in the world, and of course, say the most disparaging things about black women. And disparaging is an understatement. Like I said, guys, y'all need to stop. Y'all need to stop practicing bestiality, man. Yeah. These damn bitches alone. When did this start? Where did this lack of femininity come from? I mean, from the way well, they approach it, excuse me, the their, their bodies are. Where it's coming from is a lot of inbreeding, brothers. That's what it is. How are how how are certain groups going to survive if they can't get access to weed? And like, oh over my goodness. I don't get you guys want to practice bestiality. I thought that's we're basically having sex with black women is practicing bestiality. Um, Duck Evans said, if you go by the CDC numbers, black men live lives are safer by not dealing with black women. Yes. Preach. Preach. I like my first video essay on SYSBM, where I covered its founding ideology and original members. I am going to highlight its belief, antics, and cover a few more cast of characters I overlooked in the first video essay. Conclusively, I'm going to explain why SYSBM is by far the most fringe group on black YouTube. As you all know, SYSBM is a group that promotes interracial dating and or marriages as saving oneself. Although proponents like to portray it as telling other men to expand their dating options, the group engages in hate speech. Black women are just not feminine. They're not attractive. It just, outside of the low IQ, black Astani Negro, it, it just shocks me that, that, a, that, a, that, a, that a Scraggle's able to get with any dude, let alone a non-black dude. Don't read These dude. masculine looking heifers with their freaking weaves and all the fake eyelashes and all the makeup and they look like freaking trannies. You, you're too Straight out the freaking lap. I have long wondered why these men felt this way, and an attempt to do so failed when I saw interviews for an article I published on the group in November 2019. It was that stupid guy that um, Xanatos Clutch um, was talking about that begged Xanatos Clutch for an interview. I didn't beg for an interview, but all I know is I started to get trolled afterwards. Nonetheless, having listened to these guys, I realized most grew up in predominantly working class black neighborhoods. They either had a strenuous relationship with their mothers, felt ostracized by black people, felt that black women rejected them but non-black women accepted them, and or came to view black culture as inherently dysfunctional. So it's no surprise that they develop a grass is greener complex and even elevate other groups that have similar problems as black people. One reason why i never been able to relate to the group is because I grew up in mostly two communities that were predominantly Puerto Rican. And where I'm from, Puerto Ricans and African Americans, because of shared urban space, had the same stereotypes attached to them and faced the same issues. So I cannot comprehend the argument that black girls are uniquely mean or that black people are inherently irredeemable. The latter is an argument white social scientists used in the early 20th century. The disdain for black people is fertile grounds for fringe antics and talking point that is in essence an attempt to isolate oneself from blackness as much as possible. 
One way SYSBM encourages this is by advocating that black men relocate abroad or within the United States to cities with small black populations. When I listen to SYSBM, I often wonder whether these guys look at a map and just point to countries with small black populations to insist they are a paradise for black men. The group promotes all regions around the globe except for Africa. On that continent, it believes only East African women are worthy of a relationship and are feminine. These men have numerous stories from abroad, although some are clearly fabricated. And they were putting me up on game like the dating scene in Saudi Arabia at that time. This was back in like 2001. The dating scene back then in Saudi Arabia, it was pretty much if a chick thought you were handsome and she wanted to get at you or if you saw a chick and you could kind of make out the shape of her body because, you know, she's wearing the hijab and whatnot and you were into her. They had these business cards that had their name and phone number on them. And when a chick is shopping, you would just walk past her kind of slow and you would drop your card in her bag and she would give you a call if she wanted to get with you and you arrange the rendezvous and whatnot like that. I had one offer me. Um offer me like what was it this dude offer me two of his daughters and three of his niece and willing to pay me a hundred seventy thousand dollars just to marry you know two of his daughters and three of his niece like off you know five of these kids but despite claiming to want to get away from american women some promote this functional behavior abroad uh pump and dump you know it's like okay well you know, you're you're doing this, these these deeds that are that if you if it's what you would call the dark side. If you're going to do that, you want to make sure that you're in an environment where that doesn't come back to bite you in the ass. This same logic applies domestically. The group romanticizes cities with small black populations and dubs them as SYSBM friendly. It has nothing to do with the job market and livability. Excluding California, it views the West Coast as a safe haven for black men where one chances to date interracially are higher than they are on the East Coast, particularly the Northeast and the Southeast. I mean, here's how America works. It might as when it comes to race, you might as well have a scenario where the more west you go, um, it becomes like the Republic of Korea versus the more east, south, and midwest you go. It's like the Democratic People's Republic in the sense of the choices and liberties that black men have to date outside the race. So brothers, you know, so if you're out there and you want them slim cakes, you want them Asian slim cakes, you need to, you know, go out west and maybe Xanatos Clutch can get a hold of you. What's odd about this talking point is that since I've been following the group, I can only think of one person who has relocated and he dislikes his new location. Now, as someone who has lived in two predominantly white cities since 2014, grew up in diverse neighborhoods, and has visited many of the cities these men endorse, the concept of relocating just to date outside your race is difficult to wrap my head around. Mainly because I don't view any race of woman as better than the other. Additionally, interracial dating isn't an indicator for how black men are viewed in the respective community, nor should it be used as a measurement of group advancement. Now, there is truth that what and who is considered attractive vary geographically. And yes, you can find white women who fetishize the black men in flyover country, but black people in those locations are often only tolerated because they pose no political, economic, and social threat. Relocating isn't the only way to distance oneself from their blackness. SYSBM also endorses eugenics. I already made a video about this, but I'm shocked how the group continues to promote it, especially Sigma Jones who endorses it the most. I was just going to say this, for any young brothers out there that's sitting on the fence, you know, about SYSBM, understand this. When you go full head on steam to SYSBM, you have to practice eugenics. And the reason being is because your arms are too short to box with God. Sigma Jones says, this is also one of the reasons I lean towards eugenics. Pro-blacks don't take into account most ebony Americans have genes that come from slave farms, which didn't breed for intelligence. That's exactly right. That's a hard truth. Essentially, it believes that black people have inferior genes and it can only be quote unquote corrected by quote unquote productive black men reproduced to a non-black woman. It's amazing how the group uses anti-black talking points to uplift black men, but the mean is counterpart. As odd and disturbing as these antics are, nothing beats the demeaning statement the group other about black women regularly. There are content creators such as GW3 Extreme and Babatunde Umana who are more vitriolic and hateful in their rhetoric, but even the subtle members hold toxic viewpoints. In fact, a lot of um, older black female relatives are known for raping and having sex with their uh, underage male relatives. 
And that would explain the dysfunctional, irrational behavior nature of this black male. You know what I mean? I mean, especially if you come into London, London's just a melting pot. You know what I mean, but um, but yeah, I'm, I'm now you got. I mean, what now? If you're talking about the black women here, now you got an issue. Yeah, they got the ugliest. They're the ugliest women here. Although the group does not desire black women whatsoever, it tells its subscribers that black women truly desire to be a white man and cite various reasons why one should not date them. I, I've said it numerous times. I would bet money that there's more black women having casual sex with non-black men than there are black men having casual sex with non-black um, women. I Look at the SED rate. The SED yeah. rate actually proves that point. While the talking points are indeed nutty, that's why SBM seems to have a contagious effect on newcomers whose rhetoric gradually becomes more toxic or asinine. BGS Itmore and Trey MBD both started to appear more foolish when they joined SYSBM. Trey in particular seems bitter about his ex-wife and holds all black women responsible for his failed marriage which he claimed led him to jail and lost half a million dollars in the process. I will never sit behind bars again for any woman. It was enough, okay. Dita. Well, there's no oh, way around that explaining that. Of every black woman. That means that that's, every, that's indicative yes. of every black yes, woman. Yes, Dita. I live in Houston, Dita. But neither of these guys compare to the transformation of Man of Tomorrow. When I first watched his content, he would just ramble about dating coaches that claimed to be a multimillionaire. But once he joined SYSBM, his demeanor became more toxic. I already made a video about him admitting that he wanted black women to suffer forever. Please mm -hmm. stop suffering. I want them to suffer forever. As long as possible. 99 years old. I want to live oh, very long. On, God damn. <laughs> but his rhetoric didn't only become more toxic, it also became more foolish. In one instance, he claimed he was going to spread the message of SYSBM on college campuses. I'm spreading it to fucking college campuses in the South right now. That's what I'm doing. I'm going out there and be like, look, you ain't got to f with these motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, right. SYSBM is nutty. But its appeal is rooted in the fact that it touches an emotional core for black men who felt ostracized by black people, especially black women. That alone allows some subscribers to overlook the silliness of the group, although some gravitate to the group for solace and gradually reveals itself as a hate group and bickers nonstop about black women. And as a group that promotes individualism, some soon learn that the leaders and its core members care little about their welfare.